Hello, my name is Sarah B, and today I'll be explaining how combat works in D&D. The first part of combat is to have everyone roll initiative. That will determine the turn order. You roll initiative by rolling a d20 and adding your initiative bonus, which you can find right here. I got an 18, plus my initiative bonus of 3, that would be a 21, which is pretty good. After everyone has rolled a number, combatants play their turn from highest to lowest, and DM will roll initiative for any NPCs in the conflict. I can understand this is a bit much for younger players, so here's a simpler alternative. Just have the players roll initiative and let the player with the highest points go first, then proceed clockwise around the table. NPCs only move once the player turns have been completed. Now that we have a turn order, what can the players do with their turns? Well, pretty much anything they want. They can hide, do a skill check, use an item. Magic users tend to cast spells and non-magic users will tend to attack. Let's go over how a typical attack works. First, the attacker will decide who they are attacking and what weapon they are attacking with. You can find your weapons here. Once the attacker has decided who and how they are going to attack, they will roll the hit. Let's say this rogue is going to attack a goblin with a rapier. First, I'll roll the d20. 4. The rapier adds plus 5. That makes a 9. If you roll higher than your opponent's armor class, you hit them. But if you don't, then you miss. Since a goblin has an armor class of 15, I would have missed with a 9. But if I did hit them, I could have rolled for damage. You can see the weapon's damage by looking here. The first number represents how many times you roll the dice and what dice they can roll. The second number is the bonus they can add to the attack. This weapon says I rolled a d8 once and I got an 8. Then I can add a 3, so 8 plus 3 would be 11. That means I can subtract 11 from the goblin's health. That would definitely be an insta-kill. A fun house rule is that if you roll a 1 on the d20, you still get the roll for damage, but you then have to apply it to yourself with the idea being you accidentally hit yourself. But if you roll a 20 on the d20, then you automatically hit and get to do double damage. This area right here is meant to keep track of the character's health. Maximum HP is the max amount of health the character can have. Temporary HP is for when some sort of magic increases or decreases the character's max health. The growth potion in Macy's gift bag can do that. Current HP is for keeping track of any damage the character has received. Say if this rogue got hit and lost 3 health, they would now be down to 5 health. I could heal them with a spell or potion, but I could also take a long or short rest. A long rest is a full night's sleep, and it heals a character to their max health. A short rest is an hour-long nap, where they use their hit die to heal themselves. If my rogue takes a short rest, I'd roll the d8 once. 4. That would get me back to full health. Just remember, even if you roll higher than your max health, you still can't exceed it. This last part here is death saving throws. Death saving throws are a procedure you do if your character reaches 0 HP. It's meant to determine if they die or are knocked unconscious. Now, none of the enemies in the junior starter kit are out to kill the party, so I would just ignore this mechanic. Instead, have the character automatically be knocked unconscious once their HP is at 0, and let their player decide if they want to take a short rest or have their party heal them. But if an enemy runs out of hit points, then they're out of the game. Some games have the player announce how they kill the enemies, but in others they just fall unconscious or flee. It's up to the DM to decide whether they die brutally at the player's hands or escape the conflict. Try to pick an outcome that the party will enjoy. How does roleplay work in combat? Well, try to continue it. Have enemies taunt or insult the players. Even hold conversations with them if the players are up for that. Your players may try to find creative ways to end the conflict, like using charisma checks to find a peaceful outcome, or discussing with each other a winning strategy. A DM should encourage this kind of creativity, even if it means you have to change your campaign plan. Combat's main purpose is to add some action excitement to the game. But remember, the DM has a DM screen for a reason. Feel free to adjust the enemy's dice rolls to whatever best enhances the story. Thank you for watching this. I have two videos to recommend this time. In the first one, I'm going to run a goblin encounter to give you a feel for combat. And the second one, I'm going to explain how to cast spells.